Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Becky from Bags by Becky Mac. In today's video, we are going to do the Janelle bag by Kim Buzz Designs. It's a very structured bag. It has Decaville light and heavy. Um, it uses Peltex to get the structure of the bag. Uh, there's a lot of preparation to this bag, um, but it comes together really, really nice. So in the features of both of these bags, this one is what's gonna be in the video. Um, the structure with the flap has the heavy and light Decaville. And uh, the whole frame of the bag will have Decaville light. It's all one piece, okay? So you have to watch your directional. Um, I've got the swirly, really uh, neat uh, vinyl, multicolor. I use contrast for the flap and for the sides. Inside it has a zipper pocket and then two, I made it into two slip pockets uh, in the pattern. You can do one, you know, you don't have to do it down below there and I put a rivet in it. Um, and I used waterproof canvas in both of them. It has uh, side connectors so you can add, I have a chain that goes with this one, I put it inside the bag, but this one is a hidden connector, okay? And then it has feet. And then on this one, I did a different kind of connector and you can use any kind you want. It's your choice. Um, the pattern lays out wonderfully on everything that you'll need. I did a snake clasp for the front and again, waterproof canvas, Decaville light and heavy, um, uh, Peltex. And now I use a Peltex that's not adhesive. Um, you can get the one that's uh, for sew in and um, then I just use a uh, tape or you can glue it, okay? Again, with the uh, zipper pocket and the uh, slip pockets here. I mean, it is just such a gorgeous structured bag. Um, I think, they're, and it's a lot of fun to sew. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, I don't hesitate to ask, I like to help. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And if you're interested in either one of these bags, go to my website at bagsbybeckymac.com. Thank you, and let's get started. Okay, we're going to go over the pieces you need for this bag. Um, you're going to start with a main panel piece. It's all one, so you have to watch for your directional because um, it folds up and it gives a nice little dimension like that, okay? You're going to put Decaville light on it to make it sturdier because this is a very solid bag. And then there's markings she has in the pattern. It's a great pattern. She has all the information in it. And then I'm doing this on a cylinder arm. There is a video out there um, that does it on um, a flatbed industrial machine. Uh, but as I watched it, both of the videos I watched said, you know, some of the parts would be easier on a cylinder arm. So I'm doing this on the cylinder arm and all the markings are in the pattern, feet. This is for where your magnetic snap goes. You wanna make sure you mark all your centers and um, uh, then I'm using Peltex, uh, which they use some kind of leather board, but uh, Peltex is, is good for this bag. And because of it being a cylinder arm I'm using, I'm gonna put this in now. I have double-sided tape that I taped to the center here right now to show you, okay? So you wanna put that on and then you can put this on, make your markings. And then in order to get a crease, um, I don't know if anybody's scrapbooking, but I use this, this is what they use to score the paper in scrapbooking. So I took my ruler and I ran it down and I, you know, pleated this quite a bit. And before I placed this on here, I did the same thing with this. I took my ruler and I ran it down the line to help give it this crease, okay? So we did that, and then um, I connected this because in the pattern at the end, when you put the bag together, you're gonna sew both sides first, then you will slip this in and then sew across the top. Well, with the cylinder arm, um, I've already made one bag, I'm gonna do it this way. So. I will put some double-sided tape on this here or glue. You can do glue and press this down so it stays flat. Um, with the feet on there and the magnetic snap, it probably would hold this pretty well, but this I wanna make sure stays down. So 
double side tape that so that's the main piece there's a lot of markings a lot of preparation but the bag goes to bed to great together so um don't be afraid of all your markings take your time and do them it'll be well worth it okay so there's the main piece then you're going to need your flaps okay and you have to mirror them and then you're going to have the top one is going to have decaville heavy on it and then the the inside one because this is how it's going to go the inside one will have decaville light all right and then there's going to be two marks because you're going to fold this and this is where this comes in is you take your ruler and you run it across the decaville especially when it's warm then it really folds down okay so you just kind of run that over and crease that and that will help give you the fold you need now my other bag um, again scrapbooking i put a piece of um, chipboard in here and i can show you that i put chipboard right in here to give it the solid and to crease over um, but when I did that, I think I made it a little too big because I had to bring the flap up just a little bit. It's supposed to be down just a little bit further and then put rivets in it. So either make make uh, your chipboard a little smaller to definitely fit in between because it folds over. But I think on this one, I'm going to just try a little piece of Peltex and tape that in there and then run my creases. And then you have your other markings all around. So make sure you do your markings. And then when you put this on, the Decaville or Heavy, I don't use my iron. Um, I need more heat. So I used the uh, Cricut Press, that small little one, and I put it at 300 degrees. And um, it says six to eight seconds. But what I did is I put a Teflon sheet over it because you don't want to melt this. Place this on there and then, you know, four to six seconds, four to six seconds and keep doing that. This one came a little loose. So I'm just going to take my iron at this point and just kind of heat it. But the Teflon sheet is definitely to protect all your material. Okay, so there's those. Then you're going to need two side panels. And I'm picking an olive green. This is olive green marine that I got from My Punk Broidery. And it's beautiful. Again, markings. Um, your Decaville light on both. This is for your strap connector, depending on what you're going to use your markings on how you, you know, because all this is going to be folded up to that line. We're going to put double-sided tape and use a lot of double-sided tape. So that's for there. Then we have the two handles and I chose to go with the material. Um, some cho chose the solid, but I wanted it in the, in the snake. So these are your handles and we're going to do rolled handles. And I used to just be afraid of rolled handles. But in that other video I was telling you about, she suggested to get this tubing that I got from Lowell's uh, big box store. And it's um, like 20 feet for 10 bucks. And the interior diameter is 5 sixteenths and the outer is 7 sixteenths. Okay. And then you'll cut, it says in the pattern how much to cut. And it makes, oh my gosh. The most sturdiest handles I've ever made. I mean, they are just the seam, everything just turns out real pretty with it. I mean, it's just a beautiful, beautiful handle. So that's a great idea. So show you how to do that. Okay, and then you're gonna have a seam allowance and you're gonna fold that up to the seam allowance. All right, so that's all the exterior pieces. And then for the lining, I'm using waterproof canvas, and this is the only one that does not have a pattern piece, but she does have the measurements in it, okay, because it doesn't have the curve. It's just a straight piece, so you'll cut that out in one piece, make your marks, double side tape on it on both ends, okay, and then you have your two sides, and then you're going to make your mark. This is your seam allowance, and then double sided tape, and you have two of those. You have one zipper pocket. And then in the pattern, she has you cut it in half. Um, and I don't know how many of you run across, but I have, is when you do your zipper pocket overlay, you always have extra. And to me, that seems such a waste. So I make it one piece, and I'll show you how to do that. And then you won't have 
any left over. It should all match up. So it's one piece. You double the, the what is it? Not the width, but you'll double the uh, length of the piece, okay? And then um, in the video, the other video I watched, she did it this way for the slip pocket. And it's really pretty cool because I've done waterproof canvas. I folded it, you know, and you sew it and then you turn it in and it's just, it's real thick. But she came up with, you get your zipper or slip pocket, you measure your um, uh, seam allowance, tape it, and you'll fold this in. And then you just bring it up with this already folded and, and sewed. Because then what you'll do is you'll sew the top, put the trim, and then when you put it on the bag, you'll just sew around that and it sews it right up and you don't have to turn it inside out. It, it turns out this is the easiest way I've ever learned how to do a slip pocket. Some of my markings are going on there. Okay, and then you got your zipper overlay and your trim, okay, for those. And then for the um, hardware, I'm just gonna do for the zipper pocket, just a plain black zipper uh, with a zipper pull, okay. So plain and zipper pull. Um, I don't have any D-rings. You can probably use any kind of connectors. You want them small. But since I'm going with black and this is all I have, I'm going to use these. Okay, and they have the little washers with them. I'm going to use uh, black uh, rivets and little black purse feet. And I'm going to get my bag tag. And then I thought for fun, since it's a snake, I have the snake head uh, connector purse lock so I'm going to do that and I'll show you how to how to put that on but I think that'll be fun it'll look cute so those are all the pieces to go over with again um, if I miss anything there's a lot of directions in the pattern she has a cutting cutting chart of all you need um, but the best thing is to do is get everything prepared and and go through the pattern kind of like and uh, get it all prepared and then we'll go to the uh, next step of now I think we're going to start working on the base okay so those are all the pieces so then let's get started on making this bag okay so the one thing we're going to do now is we're going to place double-sided tape all the way around and on the other bag just to be honest if it does have a white core in the vinyl which I did not know until I cut it um, when you put these pieces together I don't know if you can see but because it has a white core this shows now all I have to do so you can see this one here is I can just edge coat it um, you know to take care of that but that happened on all my corners um, the way she has you uh, do this is she's gonna have you push hopefully you can see this let me lower you down a little bit so I can get a close-up shot. When you do these lines here, okay, and you fold this in, you won't be folding. You fold right up to that line and that line, and you create a little V, okay? And you lay that flat, and then you will take your scissors and you will cut this angle right here. You'll cut this. Well, when I cut it, because of it being a white core, it showed. So I'm going to try to do it this way, is I ran tape all the way to the edge on both sides, okay? And this one's a hit and miss. I haven't done this way before, so we're gonna learn this together. But I've been thinking about it and kind of practicing with other pieces. So I'm just going to take and start folding my edges up to the line and you just kind of work it even though there's this angle you just kind of pull up a little bit more press it down up to the line and that is some awesome double-sided tape okay and you know you can do what's in the pattern because you know she makes it work it's, it's beautiful it makes nice corners but again it depends on your material so I'm going to stop at that point right here because then what I'm going to do is probably either eliminate this or the other piece so it's not a lot. I don't want to press that down. So we'll do this side all the way up to the corner to that one cross where the other line comes in. We're just going to stop there. Okay, 
again we're learning this part together but that's what this is all about is learning how to do these things so then I'm going to take this one and start at the corner and start pressing that in Now she uses a type of glue in this pattern and that leather board I was telling you about before I used the Peltex and I did some research and I can't seem to find the brand that she uses in the States. Um, so it kinda is almost like a chipboard that we talked about earlier, but I think that's even too thick. So um, I went with the Peltex and that seems to really help. Now this one is non-sewing. You can get uh, adhesive or fusible. Um, but I figure with already ironing on the uh, Decaville light, it doesn't need to be a t you know more heat on this fabric. So just the regular sew in, and then I just use a double-sided tape. Okay, so now we're going to, because this will fold down to the line, and we don't want that extra. So we're going to go, it looks like half... If I fold this up to the line, yeah, split the difference and cut out about a half an inch. Okay, and we'll cut that out. And then we'll do the same on this side. Sorry for flipping it around. And then we'll go and do half an inch. The tape is half inch, so that kind of gives me my mark. And then we'll cut this off. And the reason why I'm bringing the bottom, the top down is because then the lining will cover up the raw edge. All right, so then we'll take off the tape and we'll bring it up to that mark and lay that down. To me, that gives me a better corner. It depends on your fabric again. And see how that that's just a little fuzz but it gives me a better corner I don't see any of the white and that works out real well okay so note to self if it has a white core we will do it this way all right so again cut out half inch and up to the line <laughs> Has tape on it so it's sticking to me and bring this down cut half inch and I'm gonna bring it up just a little bit but not much there we go get rid of that ah. remove the tape okay press it down to the line Seam allowance mark. Make sure that's pressed down. And not that it's, you know, going to be hard for the uh, cylinder arm, but I just did not like the way that it, that corner came out. And again, it was because of the material. I love the material. It was great to sew with. I mean, it was. It went really nice. But I'm just cutting off a little more. I just didn't like the white core in it. It just showed my corners, and now I have to do some uh, edge coat. No big deal. But, yeah, I like that a lot better. It gives me a nice, a nice corner, and it doesn't show inside. Okay, so now we're going to put the purse feet in. And uh, um, I've got my black... Uh, these are screw-in ones, so I'm going to put my purse feet in, and then I will be back with you on the next step. Okay, so I've got three of my feet in. I'm using some uh, screw-in ones, and what I did is I took this tool here um, and get it from Amazon, and I made my mark. And I used my little pad 
and I punched a hole all the way through. And then I'm going to put a little drop of glue into the screw hole. Okay, a little drop of glue. This is that three in one. And then put the screw through. And put that there. Take my screwdriver, it's a flat, flat head. And screw that in. Of course, you gotta hold it really tight. Sorry if it comes out of the frame. <laughs> it always rolls around. Screw that in tight. Okay, so now I've got my four purse feet on there. I think the black looks really cool. And then I'm going to take good old duct tape. Put small pieces over that. Let's just cut it down. Might not even need all that. That's some sticky stuff. And then just put it over there inside. Keep it out of your seams and everything. Don't need extra to sew over. Set down pretty good. And let me put that there. And put that there. Okay, so then that will dry. And make sure my. So now we got the purse feet on it, and now we're going to work on the male part of the. Uh, bag um, lock so with that this is what's going to be interesting this is the male part of the snake's head okay and when i practiced earlier i had to put a big hole in that would be this area so this would lay so this gold piece would lay flush so we want to make sure that that's flush in there um, because then this part, oops, sorry, this part pops in here. Now, don't do what I did and test it because this little back area, it all popped out and all the little springs and whatever else was in there. It took me a little while to get it back. I did, but don't test it. It works. So it comes with this little screw here okay because what you're going to do on the front part is you are going to punch a little hole put this washer and then you screw this on because your bag is going to go in between here and I'll show you all that as we go so we're going to take out this piece this is the washer and this is, and there's three little screws to keep them in the bag. And then, like I said, we're going to put this, and it has to go through, so I have to cut a hole. But before I first do that, I am going to tack down the uh, Peltex. And I just got a new um, double-sided tape, and it stinks. Ugh. So I have to keep it in the bag because it just stinks me out. So we're just going to lay some double-sided tape down here. Excuse the phone. And put some there. I just want to make sure that that's going to stay until we get the bag together. Okay, so I'm going to put this back in the plastic. Sorry. I love that tape, but I wish I could do something with the smell. All right, so then we're going to remove that. And remove that. And then put that firmly down. Okay. And then we're going to take my little mat, and we're going to place that under the hole. 
And then I got this, sorry again, I got this neat, this is from Amazon, and I'll have to get you a link to it. This has a whole complete set of punches, okay? And of course we're gonna need the three quarter inch because what I did is I took the three quarter inch, took the five eighths and it didn't work, but I'm gonna take the three quarter inch and it goes right over and it will become flat. Now, when I did it earlier, it took me a couple of wax, then I had to cut it out. So I think I'll do that part off camera, but I'll be right back with you. Okay, well, I ended up getting my cutting board that I do this on when I do grommets, and that gave it more stability. That little mat didn't work, and I whacked the heck out of it with my little hammer. So we've got a hole, so now we're going to put the male part well, actually, this is a female part, but that's the way it's supposed to go. Okay. And then, with all the thickness, we're, we should be fine. I don't think we need anything else. And then we're going to line that up and get my little mini screwdrivers and screw that in there. I hope there is no instructions with this. Again, I had to practice and try to figure it out, so I hope I have this right. If not, I'll be cutting this video and trying another one. But right now, we're going to do this. Okay. There we go. There's one. Oop. Okay, now you can just fast forward through this. <laughs> I'll tighten them down in just a minute. I just want to get these in there first. And once this is on here, then you can practice. <laughs> then you can put the little doohickey, the head in here, because it won't pop out. All right. It's got that screwed in. I'm just hoping it's flat enough. Oh, that tape stinks. You should lock it in. You want it tight because you don't want this thing to move. And then, so here's the that, this, then the flap's going to come over, and this will be in the flap, okay? And then this will be on the flap, which this part will be going through there. And there you go. Isn't that cool? Uh, uh, oh, I'm afraid to put it in, though. <laughs> well, better, better now than never. I think I'm going to tighten it down a little bit more. But there, then you would put that in there like that and pop it out. <laughs> Super cool. But it is kind of loose. I'm not liking that. So what I might do off camera is I'm going to take this off. And I'm going to add another piece of um, foam. And uh, in fact, what I might do is just take this little piece here. No, that won't work. Okay, anyways, I'm going to cut out another piece, and I'll be right back with you. Thanks for being patient. Okay, so I went and I added another thickness of the um, Peltex, tightened it down, and now it really looks nice. It's nice and tight in there, and so, okay, I just wanted to show you that, and now we'll go to the next step. Okay, we're working on the flaps now, and I put double-sided tape, again, on the edges, on the sides, and then on the bottom, and then I did put a little bit of uh, Peltex out of the seam allowances, because don't forget there's those two lines. I did run my little uh, <laughs> tool to help with the bend, so it gives it a nice little bend, okay? We'll fold it right down so it gives it a nice little bend. So we've got that, and now we're going to just fold 
inside now the corner here again she does it differently and you can do it the way she wants but um, I wanted to try it this way so we're gonna take this and we're gonna bring it into the line at not all the way down yet and we'll just go right straight down press that all the way to the corner there of the first line and then press that down Okay, now we're going to go over to the other side, and we're going to do the same thing, just up to that corner line right there. Press that all the way down. Okay, all right, and then we're going to cut again half half an inch and then up oh i missed that corner i should use my smaller scissors i think i will okay and then it sticks okay we've got that and then take this side and do the same thing but line it up, okay, because it does have an angle. And clip that. The tape is sticking to it, I apologize. Okay, and then bring that to the line. And then take this off and bring it at an angle, because this is your angle piece. You want to make sure and then what will happen is it will line up this way and then you'll have a little bit left over so you just trim that off before you get there Let's see how it was going to fall so then what we're going to do is we're just going to trim just like that and push it down okay it still has a little bit so you can pull it back up and trim a little bit more if you want. There we go. And push that down, line it up. Okay, we have a nice little angle here. We need a little roller. And this way then it doesn't show the white, um, depending on again, what material you use. So now we're gonna go over here Get the sticky off my scissors. <laughs> that is some fine tape. Okay. And cut that. And cut that. Maybe I don't need to bring tape all the way up to the edge there. It's the first time I've done it this way. I did practice and it seemed to work, but I didn't realize about the tape. Don't have to go all the way to the edge, I guess. All right, push those down and push that up to the line. And push it in. Okay, there we go. And then we have the little fold that little crease and then these two should line up okay there is some of that there you can edge coat that or maybe we could clip it again if you have any ideas Let's see if I can take that out and clip that I mean it's kind of like what she did it's just that uh, I didn't like the way it worked on the other one so I tried to come up with a different way because there's still a little white in this. So I'll just clip that corner, push it down. That corner looks good. That one looks good. Those corners look good. I'll clip the top of this one up. Just pull it up. Oh, that tape is good. And clip that in an angle. Push 
push it down. Yeah, it's a lot better. Not going to have to tackle that. Pull this one up. And trim it. <laughs> and push that in. Okay, and then the next step is going to be now, she does have another way of doing the um, the flap is before you put the stabilizer in it. So there's two ways. Um, I did it with the stabilizer, and then the other way would be to sew it and then put the stabilizer in. So now that that's in there, we're gonna clip this together, and then we're gonna sew the flap together. So I'm going to clip it, and then take it over to my sewing machine, and uh, we'll go from there. Now we're gonna finally start sewing. Okay, um, we're gonna put the flap together and I put some double-sided tape out of the seam allowance uh, in order just to kind of hold it. Uh, you can clip it, but once you take the clips off, you have a chance of it, you know, slipping a little bit. So uh, I'm just gonna take this off. And then this is the back flap with the uh, Peltex on it. And I just tape that on as well. And you want to line up your corners, everything real well. Make sure your sides are lined up. And before you press it down, Okay, we're going to press that down, take it over to the sewing machine, and we're going to sew it together. Okay, so I did throw some clips on there, got it all lined up. Um, we are going to just sew both edges and the bottom. Don't sew the top because when we put that, the flap onto the bag, that's where we're going to be sewing. So you want to leave this end open. My stitch length is... Let's see, for top stitching, I usually like to do a six, and I'm using black Tech 70 poly bonded nylon thread, and you wanna hold your threads. I'm using my narrow foot, and you don't wanna back stitch. You wanna pull your threads through, and you wanna just line it up just like that. And here we go. Okay, this is the nervous part to see what we what we did. That looks pretty good. All caught on the back. All right. So now we're just going to pull the threads inside here and then tie them off and then we'll go back to the table and get it ready to put on the main panel. Looks good. Okay, so now you're going to get your main panel and you're going to get the opposite side which will be your back side from this. And you're gonna get your flap and you want the point to head this way. And you can put a little piece of double-sided tape. And hopefully you can see all this. And there's a mark in the pattern that she has that you will put down. And then you wanna find your center. Okay, you find your center. And then what I did is I took my heat pin because then I could just take a little steam to it and, and mark it and it comes right off. So I took my little pin there and I made an X of where the center is. And then you want to make sure you put a little center here. Again, I used my heat pin, take my steamer and it'll take it right off. And you're going to take this double-sided tape and line up your centers carefully and press it down. Okay. 
Then we're going to take it over to the sewing machine and we're going to sew two stitches. You're going to sew one at the seam allowance and then she gives you another one at a seam allowance. And then we're going to put two rivets in there. So we'll take it over to the sewing machine and sew it down. Okay, so we're gonna hold our thread. Stitch length is still at a six. And we're gonna start, hopefully I can get everything in here. Keep this lined up. Got a lot of material to work with. Bend that up slightly. Now, sometimes I have a problem with lining it up and start your stitches. So what I kind of did is I lift up my foot and I bring my needle down right behind the fabric, okay? And then I know that the next stitch will go right onto the material. So hold your threads. This thing wants to fight me just a little bit. And then let's get going. straight on your line. Okay. And you don't want to back stitch. You just want to bring your threads through. So leave long threads. Sorry, the camera is like really up close. I apologize. And then before we do tie the threads, I'm gonna run another seam down the flap and gather these little curly threads. Okay. And leave long threads again. And then like I said, she has In the pattern I'm going to grab my threads and I'm going to start back here lift up my foot bring the needle down right outside the material okay and so Okay, leave your threads long, and then we'll go over to the table, put the rivets in, and tie off our threads. Sorry about that. See how nice that looks? That is pretty. Okay. Okay, so we've got the rivets in. I've got this sewn down. This is a good time to put your bag tag on it. Um, you can place it anywhere you want. Uh, it was suggested to kind of put it in the, the back, and then fold this over. Get your little creases going here with that those two lines to help give it that curve and look how pretty that's becoming you want to see something that's really cute watch this put the snake head on there look what fun that's going to be oh, love it love it okay so now that we're done with this we're going to set this aside Again, you put your rivets in if you want, you don't have to, and then your bag tag. Set this aside. Then we're gonna work on the sides, the exterior sides. Now, I already put my um, uh, strap connectors in. There's different ways. Everybody, you can use whatever strap connectors you want to match. I chose these because they're black and I'm using the black. Um, they're just two little prongs. They go through, um, so I've got those. I folded took double-sided tape like this one here put it down the edge we're going to fold up to the line again the measurements are in there and then you're going to take the two of these corners you're going to make pleats out of them and you're going to sew them down and then trim them on both and then we'll be sewing these into the main main bag and I've already done one so I've got my little points done here 
okay and i have i put extra clips on there because the i let it sit i had to go grocery shopping and i let it sit and i came back and all the tape had popped off so the next thing what we're going to do is we're going to center this onto the main and your exterior will be facing out and then we'll clip it to the bag and sew around it but uh go ahead and get your two sides done um you don't need me to watch that i'm gonna just like i said peel this off and uh, do the same thing as we did with the uh, exterior main piece and then sew these two at the seam allowance trim and then we'll come back and sew onto this okay so i got the one side clipped on and you really have to work that seam down inside there and what i also did is i double sided put some double sided tape to help hold it because the other bag I made it after I unclipped it it kind of like scooted because with the cylinder arm it's a whole different kind of machine and when you're going this way under the arm you have to push this in and if you don't push it kind of in as you go around I hope you can see that you know you got to push it down that it will scoot it so I put some tape on there just to kind of help hold it. So we're gonna hold the threads. Um, I'm gonna do it at five stitch length. And uh, just take your time and push that material in. And the seam allowance is in the pattern. And here we go. Uh, no back stitching, you can tie your stitches off again. Okay, these long threads, and I already saw I made a mistake. I didn't catch down here. I just sewed right over that. It scooted. The rest of it looks really good. The rest of it looks great. So I can either go back, undo the stitches, and line them up, <clears throat> which I probably would, uh, I got the corners pretty good, um, but I'm going to pull those stitches out and back stitch or, you know, pull them out till I get to about here on either side, line up my needle and, and push that back down. To be honest, I did not put double-sided tape right here. I have it here on this side, but I didn't put it here and it scooted on me as I went around the corner. So that double-sided tape helps a lot. So I'll be back and we'll sew the other side, um, but I'm going to fix this. I can't let that be. So be right back with you. Okay, this is what I'm here for, is for a teaching moment. So what I did was I took the thread out right in the center and just pulled it. And then once one of the stitches, I cut it in half, you know, in the center so I can pull it back. And I have thread on both sides. Okay, I'm going to take a needle and go through one of these stitches inside because you can still reach in and see, you can see, I didn't put any double-sided tape there. So I'm going to put some double-sided tape, stitch, put the stitch in and bring it inside here, this one inside here, tie them off. Then I'm going to bring my needle down into this one stitch and have this all lined up again. And then hopefully, I know you, you might still see the stitches. Um, Hopefully they'll kind of just fade away in time, but that's how I'm going to mend it. So I'm going to go put some double-sided tape down in here, take this and bring it through with my needle, same with the other side, tie them off, and then re-sew this. So I wanted to explain that to you what I'm going to do. Um, it will line up kind of, and then it will kind of go off here, but I'm just hoping that that didn't, that it will fade in time. Okay. 
Okay, so I tied my threads and they're inside. And then I put double-sided tape and I did that on both. I'm gonna bring my, my needle into this first stitch here and I'm gonna have to do it on top. So I guess I wanna be able to see the stitches because I can't see the stitches on the bottom. So I'm sorry if it, it gets in the way, but uh, might even have to move the camera back a little bit so I can have the room. So anyways, hold your threads and well, let's first get the person here and bring my needle down. I want to get in that first hole right there. Okay, I got that. You still got to hold your threads. Okay. And then we're going to tie them off. And here we go. Yeah. And then we'll just go one or two stitches past that one and then leave long strings because I'm going to tie them off again with the needle but you can see it did leave a little perforation but I did cover most of it up okay and we've got it done so now I'm going to take the needle pull the threads through and tie them off like inside here I left them long enough so there we go. It's fixed. It's not too bad with the yellow and stuff. You can't really see, but um, double-sided tape really helps. Like I said, because when you're going around the corner and you're trying to push this around here, you know, you only have so much material that you can push in on the sides. You have a lot, but when it comes down to here, you don't have so much. So I hope that helps and I hope it wasn't rambling, but yeah, I'm, I'm okay with that. That, that turned out better than I thought. So let me tie off the other threads. I'm going to um, make sure you put that double-sided tape down here at the bottom as well. Put the other side on, and uh, um, I'll be right back with you. Okay, we're going to finish up the other side. Hold your thread. Stitch length is still at five. Um, I use double-sided tape all the way around, and uh, no back stitching. And let's go. Okay, I'm going to leave my strings long because I'm going to take the needle again and bring them in through there. Let me see how we look. Oh, we caught the bottom. Yeah, double-sided tape with this bag is definitely your friend. These marks will come out. Oh, yeah, that looks great. Oh, my gosh. That is so pretty. Okay, so I'm going to tie off my strings, and then it is time... To start working on the lining so I'll meet you over at the table okay we're gonna work on the handle and it is the coolest handle the easiest handle um, and design to make a beefy I just love it we're gonna use this tubing and I think I mentioned it to you earlier um, and you cut it I mean it's just awesome to the the amount that she has she has the measurement in the pattern you're gonna need two pieces, and then in the pattern she has um, the measurements. I don't give out measurements, but she has it, and you're gonna double side tape on both sides. You're gonna fold up to the line, and then this line is also in the measurements. You don't wanna sew, that's your start and stop line, okay? And you'll see what I mean when I start this. But, uh, so you're just gonna fold this all the way up to the line, 
and then what I did on the other side, on the other one, is once this is folded and you have this um, area, I'm putting this in here because then we're going to be folding. I put double-sided tape right at that point because then you're going to be folding this in and making that flat and that double-sided tape helps hold that until you sew it into the back. Okay, so um, I'm going to pre finish prepping this one and we'll go over to the sewing machine. Like I said, you just fold this up to the line. I use quarter inch double-sided tape and then on the ends I used um, 1 8 inch and yes there is a lot of double-sided she uses glue and um, I don't have any of that type of glue so she also suggests double-sided tape so that's what we're going to use and there's a lot of it in here but with using the cylinder arm, it doesn't seem to have any issues with it with my stitching so far. In fact, it was a lifesaver to put that on the bottom of that bag there. Because in the or her pattern, she doesn't um, have that in there. If I remember correctly, I could be wrong. But double-sided tape is definitely your friend for this pattern. Okay, and then you're just going to bring the sides right up. And we're going to clip it all the way down to that point and that point. Because again, that's your starting and stopping. And I usually just put a little clip at the end. Oh, I forgot my double-sided tape. This one here that on put that on first it makes it easier this is such a fun bag I was intimidated by it when I did my first one I'm a little more comfortable now doing the second one just never know how it's going to fit together if you make a mistake or something, you know? So, anyways, we'll get going here and we'll clip that right there. And then I'll meet you over at the sewing machine. We'll sew both of these and then stick that tubing in there. And then the handles are done until you put them in the bag. It is the coolest thing. So, all right. Well, actually, you know what? I'm just going to sew at the seam allowance from the starting point to the stopping point. Don't forget. Okay. And I'll be right back. Okay. I got one sewed at the seam allowance. Look how neat that is. That is some beefy handle. Love it. All right. And then I sewed this one. And then, like I said, with the marks that are in there, you're going to push this tube and look into side on the other side and the tube that's for the marking and turn it and just look how easy that just slides right in there and then you're going to turn your stitching to the outside and it's still not quite down there yet so we just push that in I don't know if you can see the line but anyways look for your marking that's that Yep, and once that's there, check the other side and see how far you can split the difference. Yep, needs to go in just a little bit more. Sorry. <clears throat> okay, there's that, and that's even. Okay, so there we go. We have two handles, and then like I said, with the double-sided tape, you're going to take that off. Yeah, sewed it in there a little bit. No big deal. It comes right out. And take the other side off. And then you're going to press it down to center it. And there you go. Okay, there's that one. And so now the handles are, are done. Um, 
they won't get put on until we get the interior lining done. Just push those down. And then what I'll do is I'll just put a little clip at the end to hold that because that's how that's gonna go in your bag. So that's why you wanna make sure this is turned because then your handles are gonna go in like that. Okay, so handles done. And uh, I'll finish this up and then we'll get the lining started. Okay, so now it's time to work on the lining. Um, a lot of you already know how to do zipper overlays, sw uh, slip pockets. Um, this bag, you can create whichever way you want to do. So I am going to do a slip pocket and a zipper overlay. Um, I think I t at the beginning I showed you that I uh, got this little idea from the other video that's out there with the flatbed. Um, you don't always have to do it on a cylinder arm. You can do any of these bags on a flatbed. It's just that there's so many tutorials out there on flatbeds that when I got my cylinder arm, I decided I'll be doing them um, with that. But any of these bags that I've made, you can do on a, on a flatbed industrial machine. So I folded the sides in on the slip pocket, and then I'm going to bring it up and um, just clip it, make it, you know, even. On both sides here okay and then I'm going to take it over the sewing machine and I'm going to just stitch it down and I'm not going to show you all that because you, you know you can do that well then here is the trim then you're going to take off the tape you'll bring that up just barely to the the line make sure there's enough on each side you can trim that down pull the tape off pull it and fold this over and sew it down so there's your slip pocket and then the zipper overlay, um, same way. I always make my little mark to line up my zipper, okay? And I pressed my zipper. And then you're gonna. the measurements are all in the pattern of how to do this, okay? On this, I will show you, is she has the marks. And this is for the, the zipper pocket, which I will show you how to do that because I do have a different way of doing it than most people. But on this, you have one piece for the lining, and then you have your marks, and then you're gonna take your double-sided tape, fold it down, make sure you clip your centers on this and your centers on your side pieces. And you're going to take the tape off again, fold it down to the line, okay? Then you're gonna take these in, and I'm showing this all now because then I'm just gonna take it over the sewing machine and sew everything without stopping for each piece. So then you're gonna sew that and make a pleat on both of these, okay? And then fold that down. So I'll get these all prepared and then we'll meet over at the sewing machine. Okay, we're gonna work on the zipper pocket. You're gonna have the right side up and the zipper right side up with your zipper going to the left. I cut it about an inch and a half longer than the piece because then I put a little clip here. I moved the zipper to the end so we have a straight edge when we sew the zipper on. So just keep it out of the way. You want a back stitch. Okay, so again, if you remember, in her pattern, she has two pieces. This is the way I do it, so it eliminates that extra little fold that you have, and it keeps your pocket actually longer. So now you're going to bring your zipper up. You're going to bring the other right side to the back of the zipper, lining it to the end, lining it to your sides, and clipping it on. And then we'll clip it on and we'll sew that down. And again, if you already know what you're doing, you don't have to watch. You could just fast forward through this. But again, I wanted to show you how I do the zipper pocket overlay without that extra. You might have to trim off a little bit, but it's not as much. Some of them that I've done have been quite a bit. And it just makes that pocket shorter. 
So I do it this way. Okay, and now we're gonna hold our threads and sew the other side. And we're just basting it on. Okay, so now we've got that done and it's gonna lay like this and I'll show you again, I'll show you how we do that. When we, I'll take it back over the table, it makes it easier. Now the zipper overlay, you don't back stitch. You're gonna sew only, she has the measurements and you wanna make sure you find your center of both pieces, your main lining piece and your zipper overlay, line them up to the measurements. Um, and we're just sewing around the outer edge. And I pull my threads through on the back. Okay, tie off your threads or cut them long and then we're going to pull it to the back, tie the other side. I usually do about three knots. You can pull on this thread pretty hard too to uh, make sure it stays. Not too hard, but you can pull on it pretty good to make sure your knots are nice and tight. All right, so now what you're going to do is you're going to go over to the, or however you wherever you do it, but you're going to cut this out, okay? And I'm going to try to do it here because I've got the camera set up, and you're just going to put a little snip, and then you're going to put your scissors in. Like I said, a lot of you already know how to do zipper overlays, but this is how I do it. Make sure you get your scissors underneath your vinyl. And go about halfway. And put the other side going underneath. Okay, and then you're gonna flip it over and trim it. I hope you can see all this. And you don't wanna cut your vinyl, but you wanna cut Okay, so now you have that cut off. It looks really, really good. So now what we're going to do is, actually I'm gonna go put some double-sided tape on this. And then what I do is I run a little bit of a, uh, the eighth inch and I put it on the outside. Right, let's put it here. This is how I do it. I had the top, okay. And then I'll put it on the bottom because then what that will do is you push that down that helps lay that flat. So when you put the zipper overlay on it, you're not trying to fight with that. Okay, and you pull it down and then that will lay it flat. Then once you get this situated on here, then I remove that. Okay, so we're gonna go over the table and I'll show you that. Okay, so I put the double-sided tape on the top and with waterproof canvas, it is pretty stiff. And it's really hard to lay that flat. So again, it might be a little waste. I don't care, it makes it so much easier for me. So I'll take that, grab the top of the zipper, pull this down, and then kind 
gonna try to fold it right where that seam or that uh, thread is. And you just press it and fold it down. Okay, and I don't have tape all the way to the end, that's why that one's sticking up. All right, so now it's a lot flatter and see how that would poke up. And I use eight inch, sometimes you could use quarter, it doesn't matter, whatever you wanna use. So now you have a flat pocket, okay? And then you can put your double-sided tape. Boy, that's stiff. You gotta work fast. All right, so then you put your double-sided tape on your zipper. I should have used quarter inch. That's okay. I'll just keep pushing it down until I'm gonna take it off anyway. So just it's temporary okay so then you take your zipper overlay and there we go and then you're going to line it up i usually just try to bring my stitches and make it down on the pocket and kind of make it equal helps to take the double-sided tape off Okay, so we'll do that again, and then lay it on top, making sure that it's in the middle of that. Press that down. Okay, all right, then lift it up. See, to me, that just that little piece of tape really makes a difference of holding that down just enough to line up my zipper. We're going to press that down, and there, nice right in the middle, okay, and then we go back up and remove that little piece of tape, because if you don't, you won't get that extra I was talking about. Okay, so now... You're gonna lay your pocket flat. Make sure your pocket is flat. Pull it down, and then you're gonna cut it. That's when you do the cutting. And again, depending on how you cut it, you could still have a little bit, but it's not so much. Okay. Then you're gonna open it up, take it over to the sewing machine, lay that down. and then you're gonna sew the inner edge of it, okay? Huh. All right, there we go. All right, then just sew the inner edge and tie your uh, threads through the back, all right? Okay, so we're going to sew the bottom all the way around, or I should say the inside, making sure both of your pockets are apart and of course now i got to find the other thread there it is and no back stitching we're going to pull our threads through Don't forget to push your zipper through. I need a little piece here.
Okay, now we're gonna move the threads along so we can tie them off. And just pull them through. But my main thing I wanted to show you is see, laying that flat, now you don't have, if any, just a little, if you wanna trim it up, but you don't have a big gap that you have to cut off. All right, so I'm gonna tie, tie those off and then we're gonna sew the sides and the bottom because this is a drop-in lining and uh, that's what I like about it also. And you'll sew the sides down at the seam allowance. You can do a few clips if you'd like. Down. See, and it lays nice and flat. I love it. A few clips. And you don't have to shorten your pocket. If you left that little piece of tape on there, it would shorten it that amount. So I know some people might think it's a waste, but I'll tell you, you still have the same size pocket now. So now we're going to go and... I kept thinking, why does the pocket keep getting shorter? Oh, we're chopping all that off, so figured it out. All right, hold your threads, sew down the seam allowance, and sew all the way across. Okay, now you can trim your zipper down to that edge there. You don't have to worry about the other side. Trim your threads. And now we have a zipper pocket that's still pretty deep. Okay, there we go. All right, now we're going to attach the slip pocket. I'll be right back. Okay, so I have my slip pocket and I'm just going to do a basting stitch across the top. I still like the back stitch just to give it the support. Okay, so we've got that. Trim your threads, and now we're going to take the trim piece, take off one of the sides. You know I don't have much of a table here, but we're going to do my best. And make sure there's a little bit on each side. Take it just kind of up to the line, but not all the way. Press it down. 
take the tape off on the other side. That one didn't line up right. So we're gonna make it even. Okay, and then we're going to press it down. Matching it up to the other side. going to top stitch it and you can back stitch on this one if you want and then trim off the edge Okay, and then we're going to trim off the excess and attach it to our, okay, there we go. And then we're going to attach it, and then when we attach it, it will sew down these sides, because then we're going to sew from here all the way around. And then on my other bag, I put a divider down there. I think sometimes these are too big and they flop open. So you can just kind of decide if you want a divider, want the same, all of it. It's your choice, your option, but um, I probably will sew down the center of it. So be right back with you. Okay, so I got uh, the measurements. You wanna mark your center, mark your center on here. And some people don't mind pinning um, the waterproof canvas. I just don't wanna perforate because it's supposed to be waterproof. And I feel like if you poke a hole in it, it's gonna void what the material is supposed to be doing. So I put a little bit of double-sided tape, again, just in, you know, on the back side here, taped it down, and then I can reach in and just remove it. Oop. So we're going to sew down the edge, and again, bring my needle down so I can find the edge. There we go. And you can back stitch on this if you want, or you can pull your threads through. And then just hold on to it and keep it level and go all the way around. I don't mind back stitching on that. That's going to get a lot of wear and tear. So to me, it's a little extra stability. Okay, so then I'm going to run a seam. Well, before I do that, I'm just going to take that and take the double sided tape out of there. And now we have a nice slip pocket. I don't know, maybe I might just leave that like that. No, nope, I don't like them flopping. So my center is right there. And I might put a rivet. Let's see, why don't I do that? If I do that, and we're gonna move it over because I don't want to cut my threads. Put a rivet in the center of that. So I just moved it over about a quarter inch from the center and I'm gonna run two, two lines down it. Okay, so now I'm going to put a rivet right in the center and then it won't cut my threads. Okay. 
There we go. I think that looks really nice. There we go. All right, so now I'm gonna go back over the table real quick, put a rivet in it, and then we are going to put the sides in. Okay, so I've got that all clipped up and ready to go. I put my rivet in for the pocket and um, I uh, sewed the darts. It's in the instructions, it's real easy. It's all the same way as we did on the main uh, bag exterior. Sew them and trim it down, make your center marks, and hopefully you've done that before, all that. Then turn it inside, you'll have to turn the darts inside out so it matches, okay? And when you wanna put them together, so make sure you get that right, don't do what I did before. Um, <laughs> but anyways, make sure that the outside of the canvas is outside and the inside of the canvas is inside when you clip this together. And then what I found on the other bag and this one is my main exterior piece became a little bit longer. This all fits in real nice up until I got up to here because you clip down here and then I clipped the both edges and then as I worked it up, I had a bubble. So it's an easy fix. You just pull your uh, exterior up and realign it on both sides and then it fits in real nice. So now we're gonna sew around it. I took my plate off, still at five and hold your threads. And here we go. Okay, so I'm gonna sew the other side. I'm going to test it and make sure um, it goes in my bag right before I trim, because if I didn't take enough in, even though the seam allowance, I did the seam allowance. Um, again, the other bag, I had to take some more out. So I wanna make sure I have my, my markings in here to know that what that was. So I'm gonna sew the other one and uh, then we're gonna go put it in the bag and see how it fit. It's almost done. Okay, that's so, so, so nice. It's a great pattern. Just a few little hiccups again. I don't know if it's me, but I mean, look how nice that just sewed with that cylinder arm. Oh gosh. And when you get around the curve here, you kind of let your material fall and then till you get to the edge and then you can push that side in and hold it flat. I mean, it's just, it's gorgeous. All right, let's go back over the table and try this bag. In okay, so I got the lining in and I don't know if I told you about the, the rivet, I got that done. And I don't know if anybody else had this problem, but um, I'm going to let you know, I had a problem with fitting my uh, lining into the bag. Um, it bunched out a lot from the measurements that she gave which isn't bad. I mean, I'm not criticizing the pattern. It's just absolutely stunning. I had some issues. I must have cut it wrong or something. <coughs> Excuse me. So what I ended up doing was um, I sewed at the original, which I showed you in the video, and then came in and fit it and took it back out. And I sewed where the original seam is. And I sewed probably right next to the beginning of it because you need that to fold because it wasn't too bad through here. 
um, and I didn't, but it was really baggy. So then just so a little bit off to the side, I would say um, maybe go to the next past. I'm trying to think what that is. I think it's five eighths, but I just barely went past the, the stitch. And then I brought it out um, uh, probably about an eighth from the original line. I ran my foot down on the line and sewed it all the way around. And that really seemed to make a difference. It's not so poogy. So maybe if you don't mind taking the time, sew it at the original seam allowance, fit your bag if you have any problem, then go back in and tighten it up a little bit, but you'll have to remove the stitches. So um, it's up to you if you want to back stitch and take them out. You know, it doesn't, I don't mind doing extra work when it turns out so pretty. So. So I did that just to be honest, and now it fits real nice. And then in her pattern, on my other bag, I sewed completely around with the cylinder arm, but this one gave me a little fight. So what I'm doing, because I don't want to ruin, see when I sewed it down, it kind of mushed that. So what she says in the pattern is you start from this corner over to this corner, tie off your threads. Okay, switch it around and go from this corner to this corner and tie off your threads. With the cylinder arm, it makes it great. Um, like I said, there is a video out there with the flatbed and she does the same thing. And then I got gung-ho about it to the point where I sewed all the way around it and I forgot my handles. I'm not used to the handles being sewn in. I'm used to being, you know, down here. So, so sew your two edges, then come back and put your um, handles in and she has a pattern piece here that's at piece H and you're supposed to position it at the halfway point and then put your bag right along that edge okay and then take it back over here and let's see it didn't match up again I, I don't understand so I didn't use the pattern piece I brought it in about an inch okay this side and this side an inch in and then I tested it and made sure, um, made sure that it fit through and it's going to lay nice and give it the room on both sides of the handle. All right, so push it, position it that way, and then you're going to close your bag like this, and it's going to come down, and that's how you kind of see your sides. And I know I got the clips in the way, but this gives me a general idea. So my flap is pretty much in the center there. Yep. Okay. So I'm sorry I'm fumbling and I don't mean to. It is a beautiful pattern. I don't know if it's a different type of material that she uses with the Peltex we use and the leather board she's using. Um, but those are how I fixed things. Um, a lot of times I see videos that they just say, oh, everything fits great, you know, and then they edit it and make it look great. But I had some problems with it and I wanted to let you know if you have any questions or comments how to fix something I didn't explain don't hesitate to ask. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the machine and we're going to start in this corner and go across, leave long threads, and then we'll go over here, start in this corner and go across. Okay. And you can add a rivet if you want um, to make this a little sturdy, but the other bag seems to do well. So uh, those are, those are some of the little hiccups I ran into, but it's easy fix. Just tighten up on your corners just a hair and then bring it in a little further and you're all seamstress if you're watching this video you kind of have some idea of how to do that and again if not please don't hesitate to ask and I'll be glad to help you all right enough about that let's go over to the sewing machine and finish up this bag okay I have my stitches at six stitch length and this is hopefully what is great about the cylinder arm to get that in there unfortunately there we go all right that clip's kind of in the way so we'll just kind of go around the corner this way and make sure you're lining and everything's underneath and bring your needle down which mine is already down bring it down a little bit more. There we go. 
I'm going to hold your threads. Not around your needle, though. There we go. Okay, push that back. Line it up. And no back stitching. Really? Okay, folks. We're going to turn it on. Okay, so we got that sewed in. We're gonna check, leave your threads long because we're gonna pull them in the back and it looks good. So from one point to the next. All right, so now we're gonna sew the back part. Make sure your flap is out of the way and we're gonna do the same thing. Just take your time, line up your needle, pull out long threads. Get it underneath there. There we go. Line it up. Bring my needle down just a little so I can get it in there. Take your time. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Alrighty. Oh, I feel intimidated by it, but really it goes real nice. It goes through real nice. It didn't hiccup. Stitches look great. Okay. Oh, that's exciting. Okay, we're going to stick that through there. And these will fold in. This will clasp down. I'm going to go over and put that in that pretty. I don't know if I want to put rivets in there or not, but uh, some people do. Um, but now we're going to go over to the table and put the clasp in, tie off our threads, and this bag will be done. Okay, here she is. Um, what I did is I uh, stuck a pin, put this bag, you know, where the fold is, where she has that fold, fold it down, took a pin and found the center, stuck it through, then I cut a hole using uh, the little tool that we use to do rivets. Did this, put it in the center, and then stuck the snake's head on, screw the washer and screw this in, and then it locks right in there. Check that out. Look how cute that is. Now that's a pretty bag, nice and sturdy. And then my strap connectors where I'm gonna make a I don't know if I'm going to use a chain and then here's the back of it get a purse feet so there you go um, I hope I taught you some things and and sorry for some of the mishaps but if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you have any comments or questions don't hesitate to ask and if you want to purchase this bag and go to my website at bagsbybeckymack.com I thank you and you have a great day